Well, I think, unfortunately, the reality is that Muslims are responsible, you know, at least in a large part for the negative press that abounds because we provide stories. <laughs> you know, were there no material, there would be no story. And sadly, there are a great many Muslims out there who are portraying a very negative image of Islam and not just, you know, the terrorists. There are also Muslims behaving in ways that are completely at odds with the message of Islam. And of course, this is then propagated as a representation of, of Muslims and, and the message of Islam. And of course, that presents a very distorted picture for people who already had heightened concerns, if you can imagine, in the sort of post 9-11, 7-7 climate. There was a lot of, and there is still a lot of fear and confusion. And then in addition to that, you have sort of uh, Muslims behaving badly, if you like, in, in other areas, which reinforces this idea that Islam has only negative things to contribute to society, that it is a problem. Uh, now, of course, it's undeniable that there is an issue with the media uh, or certain sections, I should say, of the media, certainly, uh, you know, more right wing leaning media uh, that do propagate, uh, you know, sometimes completely factually incorrect stories about Muslims and do entertain uh, an atmosphere of uh, negative press that they, they that, you know, they've realized that, you know, negative stories about Muslims do sell. Um, and I think this has been certainly picked up on by uh, many mainstream figures, whether it's Mehdi Hassan from the New Statesman or uh, Baroness Farsi from the Tories or Peter Oborn, the, the journalist, who said quite rightly that, you know, uh, anti-Islamic sentiment is the last acceptable form of uh, bigotry in Britain. Um, so clearly it is a problem. It does exist. But I think it's important that Muslims realize that, you know, we do have issues within the community, serious issues uh, that need to be dealt with. And whether the media, media spotlight is shone on them on, or not, uh, we should be tackling them. I think the reason that they talk about, you know, Muslim or Islamic extremists is because, unfortunately, extremists at hand do claim to be inspired by, uh, you know, Islamic precepts when they act. You know, they do claim to be quoting, you know, sources that, you know, reference Islam or they, you know, quote disjointed or decontextualized uh, passages of the Quran. So, you know, they themselves do claim to be acting in the name of Islam. I think the right wing press certainly has a huge part to play for, uh, you know, in presenting uh, perhaps um, a disproportionate attention to the um, Islamic label, if you like, and perhaps not being so even-handed in, in the presentation of other stories. But certainly I read a, an article in The Guardian today about the, uh, the burning of a mosque in the West Bank, and it referred to Jewish extremists. Um, so, you know, this, this language is used. Um, it's just obviously there are uh, undoubtedly, uh, unequivocally, there are sections of the right-wing media that do uh, play on these negative stories and on, you know, minute stories that perhaps aren't even uh, sort of based in fact uh, to uh, scaremonger uh, and foster an atmosphere of, of fear and hatred, which is very convenient in the current economic climate when really very few people have any concrete solutions or any uh, positive, uh, you know, propositions to make uh, in order to enhance, for, you know, ease uh, or improve people's lives. And, it, we, we, you know, historically, and it's, it's a fact historically, that in periods of economic downturn, there is a search for a scapegoat. Uh, you know, and I think Europe, as Europeans, we need to be very wary and very concerned uh, about the direction that we're taking just because of our history. Uh, and because we need to be alert to the fact that this is a phenomenon that has struck before and, uh, and could easily strike again. Certainly the rise of Islamophobia has gone hand in hand with a, a rise of anti-Semitism. I mean, Berlusconi recently is, you know, was caught making a, an anti-Semitic joke, uh, you know, during, during a conference. I mean, these, this sort of rise of acceptability of sort of far right uh, discourse is, is extremely worrying for all of us. Well, well I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know if I necessarily see myself as a role model. I think perhaps the best message is to say that, you know, uh, the, the current pantheon of celebrities, the um, sort of array of uh, demigods uh, that parade as role models, 
uh, you know, are perhaps not the uh, greatest um, uh, people to look up to and certainly are not uh, those who I hope that we as Muslims will be looking to uh, in terms of how to model our own behavior. Um, it's incredibly important to make sure that uh, you, you, you are selective in the information that you appropriate um, about uh, anything uh, and certainly about your faith. So I think it's, you know, the, the key message is to be critical, to be selective and to, to have a nuanced understanding. Uh, there are very, very few things in this world that are black and white. Uh, and uh, the, the best thing that one can do is to keep acquiring knowledge. Um, I think that I can remember a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which he talks about knowledge as an armor. Uh, and it's a friend, uh, and, and this is absolutely true. Uh, the more information you have, the better you're able to discern uh, the complex reality in which we find ourselves. And, and I think part of that uh, uh, discerning and part of that understanding helps to develop a more stable and balanced core uh, and hopefully move us beyond the kind of reactionary responses that we often have uh, so that we can return to the core precepts of the faith. You know, it's absolutely essential that we, um, you know, stop this tit for tat, that we remember that, uh, you know, the Prophet, peace be upon him, quite rightly said, you know, uh, do not be the people who say when they uh, are good to us, we are good to them. When they oppress us, we will oppress them. Rather, be of the people who say when they are good to us, we are good to them. And when they oppress us, we do not oppress them. Uh, these are the messages, these are the sort of powerful messages really that we should be propagating, that we should be using as tools to try and transform our society towards uh, a greater uh, ethical ideal uh, and, and hopefully be carriers of the uh, divine values that we hope to see um, in the world around us. And if we're not doing that, then there's, there's a problem. Wow, well, I love traveling. I love traveling uh, to any country, uh, but certainly in the, in the uh, Muslim majority countries, there are a number of places that I hope to be able to travel to in the future, uh, one of which is Malaysia. I'd love to go to Malaysia, Indonesia. Um, I'd love to travel to Iran. It's one of the countries that's been on my map for a while. Syria is another place. Um, so uh, absolutely, there are a, a great, and Senegal, I'm desperate to, to travel, travel to Senegal if I may at some point, but uh, I absolutely I love traveling and I think part of traveling is expanding your mind and realizing that there is uh, so much diversity uh, even within our own community, even within the practice of Islam, uh, and that that diversity is a richness. Um, the 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 richness of different perspectives, the richness of different understandings, um, and I think that it's important to realise that because um, sometimes we are caught up in quite a narrow understanding uh, of, of Islam, uh, and so I think travelling can really help us to sort of broaden our horizons in that respect. Things like, uh, you know, human rights laws, uh, individual freedoms, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of congregation, uh, freedom of religion. Uh, these these core aspects, of course, are are the issues that um, that spring to mind when I think of Iran at a political level. Uh, but as a at a social cultural level, uh, you know, I have a, a good many Iranian friends and. Uh, I, I really do hope to be able to come and meet, uh, you know, the real Iranian people and not necessarily the talking heads that we see on TV that I'm sure don't represent the sort of rich and diverse culture uh, in the country.